Hey, we're going to be building a really cool application on ZK Sync. It's going to be an application where we can use a custom paymaster, as you've seen in previous videos, that we can use as custom paymaster to sponsor gas for our users. This is going to be a really cool application. In this first video, we're going to focus on just the introduction to it. We're going to take a look at the code base. We're going to set it up. What I want you to do is at the end of this video, try setting it up for yourself, because in the second video, we're going to build something really cool together. And I want you to be able to do that yourself or build something new uh, that excites you. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so first thing you need to do is pop over here to github.com slash alchemy platform AA starter ZK sync. I'll make this link available for you uh, as well. So you can go ahead and clone this repo and follow along either with the steps in this video or with the readme uh, down below. So this video is going to go over these same steps, but if you need to uh, follow it in written form, you can also find it here in the readme. Okay, great. So what we're going to do is uh, clone this repo. I already have it cloned down and then you're going to install the dependencies with yarn and then we're going to start set up some environmental variables. So let's go ahead and jump over to the repo. I have it right over here. So the first thing that you're going to notice when you come into this repo, uh, it's something that's written in the uh, read me as well is that we have this dot env sample this dot env sample is going to have a couple environmental variables that we're going to have to set up uh, the key one that we have to set up here the key one is the alchemy api key right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a dot env and then we're going to go ahead and put the alchemy api key in there notice for the paymaster address and we'll come to this in a moment the paymaster address i wrote optionally here because we don't need to necessarily uh, put in a paymaster if you don't put in a paymaster right away you are going to have to pay for the gas with your account so we'll take a look at that first we'll pay some gas with our account and then we'll go ahead and um set up the paymaster so we can have that be gas sponsored for our users. Okay, great. So our Alchemy API key, what is it going to be? It's gonna to have to be an API key that is uh, set up with an embedded accounts config. Uh, we're gonna be using embedded accounts in this video, which is going to be an account that's embedded inside of the web application for the user. So all they have to do is log in with an email and then they could uh, go ahead and access an account, start signing transactions immediately. So we'll see that in a moment. Uh, so we just need to set up the API app and then we also need to set up uh, an embedded accounts config. So if you are a new user, uh, you can come out to alchemy.com. If you just go to alchemy.com and then you sign in, it's gonna take you in here to the dashboard. And then once you're inside the dashboard, what you can do is you can come over here to embedded accounts. As a new user, it's gonna show you something like this, where you can click on get started. And this is going to go ahead and give you a, a basic quick start experience, where it's gonna give you an API key. It's gonna create an app for you automatically and give you a gas policy. In this particular case, we're not worried about the gas policy because we are not going to be using a gas policy, we're gonna be using our own custom paymaster. The key thing that we're worried about here is having an API key. Uh, that is going to have an embedded accounts config. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. It's saying Arbitrum Sepulia here. This API key is going to be available uh, multi-network. Uh, so it may not say that depending on uh, when you come in here into this application later on. Uh, but for now, it's saying Arbitrum Sepulia. Don't worry about that. Uh, you could just pull this API key over into your application. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that on in. Here's my API key. And now that's all we really need in order to get started with this application. So I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and run Yarn Dev. Uh, and then later on, we'll focus on getting that paymaster in there. This is going to start us up on localhost 3000. And we can log in with a uh, user here. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use something called uh, tempmail. Tempmail is going to go ahead and create an email address for me that I can sign in. Uh, so we have a brand new account for our user. So this is going to go ahead and start us up here. Uh, let me copy that over. The email is on the way. And then we'll go ahead and click in here. This is going to take us back into the application so we could start sending transactions with this new address that is associated to our email address that we had just a moment ago. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start sending some transactions. Uh, this is going to fail if we try right away. Uh, so it's going to say transaction pending. And then it's going to give me an error. And if I click into this error over here, it's going to say that I don't have enough gas in my account. And that's true, right? This is a brand new account. Uh, it doesn't have any gas in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and load this up with some gas money. Uh, so I'm going to come over here to an account that I know has some um, uh, ZK Sync Sepulia. And I'm just going to go ahead and send a little over. So we'll send 0 0.005. That seems like a reasonable amount. Let's go ahead and send that through. And uh, hopefully that will be there momentarily. Let's go check it back over here in the 
Explorer, looks like it came through. All right, cool. So I have that balance. So now what I can do is I should be able to start sending some transactions. So here's transaction number one. Cool, let's send a second one. Second one. All right, awesome. Let's take a look at these transactions. So if I click into transaction one right here, uh, you can see that I have the input data. There's no value in this one. Uh, and I am paying for the gas fee with my account. So now my account, uh, this is the from address right here, should have less gas money because it's paying for the gas every time in this uh, Explorer here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna change a couple parameters around. So we're gonna change the data to leap twice. And uh, we'll also put in some value in here. Let's do 999. That's going to be in way, uh, so that's not going to be a, a ton, but we'll be able to see that we can change some of the parameters around. So if you wanted to target a smart contract with some call data, pass in some value, whatever, you could do all that in here, right? We have the full ability to send whatever kind of transactions we want to uh, with the to data and value field. So let's go ahead and send that through, and we're going to get this transaction right here. And if we pop this open, uh, you could see that we have leap twice in the input data, and then you could see that we're sending an input value of 9999. Awesome. So what this is giving us the ability to do with the application in its bare bones form right now is just send any type of transaction that we'd like, and we are paying for the transaction with our account. What I'd like to do, one more thing in this video, which is set up the Paymaster, uh, and then in a future video, we're going to make a UI that would actually be nice for a user to see, right? Like users don't know what call data is, not your typical user. Uh, so this is not a form that you would want to show them. This is just something that shows that we can put in whatever kind of two data value that you want to put in. But in the next video, we'll build something a little bit more specific, right? Great. So let's go ahead and start sponsoring these transactions. I want to sponsor these transactions. So what I need is a paymaster, a custom paymaster. Uh, fortunately, I have this repository that we set up in a previous video about custom paymasters, where we have a paymaster that is going to go ahead and just do the bare minimum that it needs to do to sponsor transactions. And that bare minimum is just going to be sending back a magic value, saying that this validation is successful, and it's going to send uh, value over to the bootloader to pay back the bootloader uh, on behalf of the account. So that's really all this Paymaster is doing. It also accepts Ether, so we can send some Ether over to it uh, in order to pay for the gas, in order to have the gas money on the Paymaster. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and deploy this. Um, like I said, I'll also make this available, this re repository here, but it was in a previous video that we created this Paymaster and then we deployed it. Uh, so I'm just gonna do the same thing here. So I have a private key that has some gas money in it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run node scripts deploy. And this is gonna give us a brand new Paymaster. So let's go ahead and see that Paymaster address. This is going to be the one right here. The first one it's logging out is the wallet address for that private key. And then the second console log is going to be the actual Paymaster address here. So brand new Paymaster, should have no gas in it. If we go back to the application and we go into uh, ZK Sync Sepolia and take a look at the address here, we should see that this is a contract and it is a contract with no balances, right? So here is our Paymaster, no balances, brand new Paymaster. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do two things. I'm gonna give it some gas and I'm also gonna go ahead and fill this in in our .env. So let's go ahead and fill it in in the .env first. So here's the Paymaster address. Uh, what was the name of the variable? It's this next public Paymaster address. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in here. Uh, great, so there's the Paymaster address. It looks like it's doing a full reload, so we should be good there. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is just go ahead and give this some gas. So let's come over here and send some through. I'll give the same amount for the Paymaster here as well. So we should be able to send over, let's say, 0 0.005. That's plenty on ZK Sync Sepulia. Uh, probably could send quite a bit less. Okay, great. That looks like it went through. So now we have a Paymaster that uh, should have some gas on it. And if we wanna just double check that, let's come over to the contract and just make sure that it has some balance there. Okay, great, it has some balance. So what we can do is we could go ahead and sponsor some transactions uh, for this user, for this address right here, uh, so that the address doesn't have to pay for uh, any of the transactions. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, this should be it. So we have this next public paymaster address that's plugged in here. What this is going to do is it's going to come into the config here. 
And inside of the config, you're going to see that we have uh, the paymaster address set up down here. Now this paymaster address, where it's gonna come in handy is inside of something that's going to be in components and then web three, we have a couple hooks in here. One of the hooks is this use transaction. Now this is going to do most of the difficult stuff for getting embedded accounts working with ZK Sync. Uh, so if you take a look in here, you're gonna see that the code is a little bit uh, complex. But what's nice about this use transaction hook is you can use it really simply. All you need to do is send over the two value data, which is those fields that are inside of our UI there. And then this is gonna handle everything for you. So like I said, any two value data is going to be any type of thing that you wanna be able to send on an EVM chain. So uh, this is really all we need to care about. And then it's gonna do a bunch of things. It's gonna show a nice toast saying, hey, this transaction's pending, now it's sent through. Uh, and it's gonna estimate gas, get all the transaction count for the nonce and all that sort of stuff. The other thing that's going to do is if a paymaster address is available, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fill it out as custom data on this transaction. Uh, specifically, this is going to be an EIP 712 transaction, which is a typed uh, data. You can look up that EIP if you wanna learn more, uh, but you don't necessarily have to understand how all this works underneath the hood. Uh, this is going to be the stuff that we just need to fill in in order to make it possible for us to be able to send paymaster sponsored transactions. So this is all the stuff that's happening underneath the hood. We get this like custom signature that's going to be validated inside of our paymaster, although our paymaster currently does not do any validation. And um, we're going to sign that transaction and then send it through. So that's where this is happening. So what that means is this, um, this next public paymaster address it doesn't necessarily have to be in there as we saw. If it's not in there, then it won't sponsor the gas, but if it's in there, then it will sponsor the gas. So now that it's in there and we've reloaded the application, we should be able to go over here and see that uh, these are gas sponsored transactions. So if I send one, uh, we should see a new transaction pop up over here. Uh, maybe I'll send a second one just for fun. Uh, and what we could see is if we come over here to the Explorer, we'll see that this is paid for by the paymaster there, right? So you can actually see some of the details on what was actually paid for by the paymaster. You could see our paymaster address right here, which is that paymaster we just deployed. And we could see that it's actually using some gas money, right? Uh, great. So our paymaster is sponsoring transactions. Uh, if we wanted to prove to ourselves that this is working, maybe we could uh, have an account that doesn't have any funds in it. So we could log out and log in with a brand new account. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. If you click down here to account and you click log out, you can see this is our email and our address. Let's go get a new email, new address. So I'm gonna log out and I'm gonna go temp mail. We'll copy this, bring it on over, get the email. Open it up, great. So now we're back in the application here and uh, what you should see is we have a brand new address, right? That's associated to our email. And what we could do is we could send uh, some transactions here. Now this address is a brand new address, right? So it's not going to have any gas inside of it. So you can see this account doesn't have any balances, but we should still be able to send transactions because these are now gas sponsored transactions, right? So we could send transaction one, we could send transaction two, and uh, there we go. Right, these are gas sponsored. We click in here, we could see that it was paid for by the paymaster. Okay, awesome. So this application, very, very bare bones. Again, this is not what you would wanna show a user. So in the next video, we're gonna get into something that is a little bit more user friendly, something that is a little more domain specific. We'll take a look at building a really cool application in the next video, extending on everything we see here. And we'll dive even further into the code base to take a look at exactly how all of these things work.